I am not the co-host. You are the you are the host, so you can start recording. Thank you. And we'll see if folks come in. So it is it is April 9th, 2024. This is a regular meeting of the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council. Uh, we seem to have a quorum, so let's uh, let me just read this and then we'll call to order. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20, the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107, the Acts of 22, and extended by Chapter 2, of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public is possible, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So let's uh, let's take a head count, uh, see if you can hear us and be heard. Cameron is here. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Present. Councillor Ette. Aye. Good. Uh, Jennifer Tao. Present. And we have three wonderful staff people with us tonight. Dave Zomek, our liaison and, and host. And Christine Brestrup, Director of Planning, and Stephanie Ciccavella, Director of Sustainability. So we are going to re, uh, reorganize our um, agenda so that you all come right after um, um, public comment. So you don't have to hang out while we do. While we, there are no attendees in the audience. I'll wait for 20 seconds. And then we'll call it no public comment. Okay, that's enough. No public comment. Um, we will go to the action items. And Christine has a message she would like to share with us. Um, and you might just give the background that you spoke with Mandy Joe as we, as you had requested to just talk about strategies for organization of this document. Yes, um, good evening. I'm Chris Brestrup, Planning Director. I'd like to introduce myself to Freka Ette because I haven't met him before. Hello, Freka. Councillor Ette, nice to meet you. Nice I know you. everybody else. So. Um, so the last time we met was on March 26th and we introduced the solar bylaw to the CRC as it had been drafted by the Solar Bylaw Working Group, and it was presented to Town Council last fall. The CRC has been charged with refining and preparing a draft document to present to Town Council for a referral for public hearings. So following up on the CRC's discussion on March 26th, Stephanie Ciccarello, Sustainability Director, and I met with Mandy Johanneke this morning to discuss the draft solar bylaw. We wanted to hear more from Mandy about her thoughts on organizing the bylaw as she had started to talk about that at the CRC meeting on March 26th. Assistant Town Manager Dave Zomek joined us for part of the meeting, and we talked about a number of things. Mandy shared her thoughts about the current draft bylaw and how it could be streamlined and clarified. We talked about separating the material in the bylaw into topics, and some of which would be included in the zoning bylaw, and some of which would be included in rules and regulations of the permit granting authorities. We also talked about creating a boilerplate list of conditions that would be imposed or could be imposed by the permit granting authority on projects that they're reviewing. Um, we already know that the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, and the ZBA have lists of boilerplate conditions that they typically apply to almost every application. Conditions related to solar projects could be added as part of the boilerplate conditions for the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board, which would be the permit granting authorities for solar installations. In addition, this morning we talked about preparing a cover memo that would explain what the bylaw and regulations and conditions are meant to do and how we separated the topics and why. The cover memo might also contain some of what is now in the intent and purpose section of the solar bylaw. We discussed how to incorporate requirements related to battery energy storage systems, both as standalone installations and as part of the solar array, um, as part of a solar array. 
uh, we, the people who met this morning, it was a small group, but we would like to recommend incorporating the requirements um, related to battery energy storage systems into the solar bylaw um, so that we would all have everything in one place. Um, we discussed consolidating requirements related to certain topics. And this is not an exhaustive list of topics, but it's kind of illust illustrative. So we have vegetation requirements, we have setback requirements, we have reporting requirements, and we have a number of other requirements. So Mandy's suggestion was to, to consolidate those requirements. Um, we also touched on the topic of consolidating definitions related to solar installations into Article 12 of the Zoning Bylaw, and that's the portion of the Zoning Bylaw that uh, deals with definitions. Most definitions from other sections of the bylaw are contained in Article 12. The only deviation to that kind of rule is in the FEMA floodplain overlay district section, which is Article 16, where we included definitions in the body of that article because much of what is contained in Article 16 is governed by state and federal requirements. We discussed the topic of ecosystem services, which is one of the definitions in the bylaw. And that is noted as something in the draft bylaw that the solar bylaw seeks to maximize. There were questions about this term, what does it mean and how do we measure whether we have maximized these services or not? There's also a list of guidance documents that is included in, as resources in the section on stormwater management, erosion and sedimentation control. And we this morning thought that these could be included in the memo or in the rules and regulations rather than being included in the bylaw since they're really resources more than um, requirements or limitations or regulations. Um, let's see, at the end of the meeting, we propose that the CRC consider developing a package of four documents. Um, and these would be to bring back to the council. And one would be the draft zoning bylaw on solar installations, including battery energy storage systems. The second would be draft rules and regulations to add to the ZBA and planning board rules and regulations. A third would be draft boilerplate conditions that would be used by the, both the ZBA and the planning board when they were reviewing and permitting solar projects. And the last one would be a cover memo. Um, so as we take the first step in separating out <clears throat> the various parts of the draft solar bylaw, draft solar bylaw into bylaw rules and regulations and conditions, we thought it would be a good idea to keep the wording of the draft bylaw as it currently exists in order to send it around for review by various boards, committees, and staff members who will be asked to review it. Then we would take their comments and recommendations and begin to revise the language of the bylaw, rules and regs, and conditions. We look forward to working with you on this project. Thank I you. can send this memo or this that, you know, list of notes around. Nice. That would, would be great. That that I was writing really well. quickly. <laughs> yeah, I've got a Thank whole you. page already. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> Just in the document. <laughs> so, that, that was an amazing summary, Chris. I, I feel like I was at the meeting. <laughs> they said you oh, were. It was really good. <laughs> I have a quick question question. Yep, go ahead. Uh, Chris, you said um, moving the uh, intent and purpose sections into the memo, and I was talking um, to Martha Hanner, and she thought that some of the nexus statements were put in there, and I don't know which it should be. I'm not, uh, the nexus statements were put in for the state so they could understand why we were doing this so that it wouldn't, uh, how it related to health, safety, et cetera. And it wasn't just whimsical stuff that the town wanted. Um, so I'm just asking about that and which way I don't, it's too early to know which way we'd go, but. Is this a conversation or should I raise my hand? No, raise your hand that I can make sure that, that you get counted, but don't, don't wait for me. Yeah. Uh, and Chris. Yeah, so um, I think that the nexus statements and the intent and purpose are two different things. And you're right, Pat, that the nexus statements were put in there to bolster or support um, the regulations that we might have, particularly about forests and farmland. And we didn't talk about taking 
those out okay. and putting them elsewhere. We talked about the fact that the intent and purpose section of this bylaw is really long. It's like a page yeah. and a half. <laughs> and so some of those things could be, you know, summarized or consolidated or put into the memo rather than having them all in the zoning bylaw because they're yeah, thank, yeah. supportive rather than reg regulatory or. Thank you for clarifying that for me. I appreciate it. Good, Jennifer. So if it's in the memo, does that stay with the document? So to speak, I mean. You're with the bylaw? With the bylaw, yeah. Or It wouldn't or, be part of a it wouldn't be part of the bylaw. It would be part of a packet that the town council receives, and then it would be part of that, you know, set of of documents. But um, typically, a memo, you know, when we send mem when we send zoning bylaws to town council, we we write a memo, and then the town manager writes a memo, and those are not included in the bylaw that's eventually adopted. But those are things that could be accessed later on if people wanted to read them. And we'd be asking the permit granting authority to do what whatever would be in the memo. Yeah. Or to consider doing it. We can't yep. require them. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think we're, I'm going to go to Stephanie, but I'm just going to answer that. So the memo I think that Christine is talking about is that as we package, if as we package up documents um, at the end of our, iteration here uh, and we report as CRC back to the council, um, there's a suggestion that we that we look at these this four parts, these four documents that we might consider um, to sort of pass over to town council to say, okay, this looks pretty good. Now you go hold your public hearings on it. So I don't think our memos are going to dictate anything that's actually content of the bylaw if that's what you meant yeah okay it's just a guidance a guidance or an uh, introduction document i think stephanie you have your hand up yeah i just wanted to add to that that um the idea is that they will be the memo will be part of the record so as you stated you could access that information later but also because there's there are several um references, guidance, reference documents that don't really have a place, as Chris mentioned, in the bylaw itself. I mean, one of them, in fact, even re uh, references um, guidance in from Minnesota that really doesn't belong in a Massachusetts bylaw. So the idea is that they would be incorporated into the memo so that they can be referenced later, but also so that we can try to maintain the work of the solar bylaw working group in these respective documents. So the idea is that we're not taking and changing all the language, we're just synthesizing, organizing, and creating really the, the appropriate place where some of these things should go, like the regulations and the boilerplate conditions. Those things are definitely things that we want to ensure that the original language is at least available for review but in a place that makes sense and doesn't have everyone feeling like they have to completely unravel the bylaw itself. David. Yes, I was just going to add, I was part of the conversation this morning and very impressed with Chris's summary. Um, but I really liked the, I wanted to just comment on, you know, having the meeting this morning with Mandy as, as, as the CRC um, wanted us to do, um, it was a very iterative, you know, nobody came in with this preconceived notion of how the conversation would go. And I think it went really well. And I, I like this package, this family of documents. You know, we have we have a lot in the document that was transmitted to the council. And I think to some degree, you know, taking a little time to pull out those elements, not lose any. We're not talking about losing any of them, any of that hard work that happened over 18 months or so, but trying to figure out, okay, what goes under the bylaw, what goes under rules and regulations, what goes under conditions, and then the memo to me, you know, as has been indicated here, kind of sets the stage for transmitting it to the council, you know, how, how it was arrived at and all of that. But those first three documents, I think, you know, we can tease with, all of us can tease out 
those elements that belong in the bylaw, belong in the rules and regulations, and then belong in the, the draft conditions. So, you know, I, I think it's I think it's going to be very interesting and and we're going to learn a lot through the process. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm oh. just putting my hands in my mouth. <laughs> your, your box, your box lit up. <laughs> That's my personality. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> um, I think it sounds like a very sound approach. Um, and what I was going to ask is for the benefit of, of all of us here um, who are on the committee, I wondered if, Christine, you might give us a couple of examples. So we've talked about rules and regulations, and that was sort of the intent of having a discussion with Mandy was to to see if some of these pieces might come out as um, from the bylaw and and show up as a rule or regulation. So in our in our town bylaws, we have, for instance, um, parking regulations. Article seven is parking regulations. What are the elements did, that you might have talked about that? fall under that category of rules and regulations? Um, so we have a long section of submittal requirements in our draft solar bylaw. And we also have submittal requirements in the rules and regulations of the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals. So we can take many of those submittal requirements and move them to the require the rules and regulations of the ZBA or the planning board having we can have them you know separated out from all the other rules and regulations uh, submittal requirements but they are more appropriate to be put in the rules and regs than they are to be put in the bylaw now that's not to say that there weren't examples I looked at a lot of examples of, of bylaws of throughout the state and there were certainly examples where you know, towns and cities did have requirements, uh, submittal requirements in their bylaw. But, you know, having thought about it now and having heard Mandy talk and discussed it this morning, I feel like it, those things really are more typically found in rules and regulations. Okay, so that, so I'm looking at our list of, of the categories that are in the draft document, and that was 17.04 submittal requirements and yes. so that's, that's quite a list um would that include things like special requirements or design standards or is that better in the in the the bylaw itself i think design standards are more typical to be in the bylaw itself um the submittal requirements like you said is in 1704 and you know a lot of it is existing site plan and then what do all what does the existing site plan have to include for a solar installation and um, what does a proposed site plan have to include for solar installation um, documentation um, of about access and control of the site in other words whoever's going to build this thing he needs to show um, the town that he's got access to the site and he has control of the site. Um, a plan for operation and maintenance. So those are things that would be more appropriate to put in the rules and regulations than in the bylaw itself. An access plan. How about monitoring? Monitoring, I think, should be in the bylaw. Yeah. Stephanie. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that, you know, the idea was um, also that there are some of the some of the um, items really speak to conditions as well. So we'd have the regulatory document, but then the special boilerplate. And I'm looking specifically at um, the requirements regarding soils management and, and conservation on farmland. I mean, that whole section is just screams of primarily regulatory and special conditions. Um, so I think we could go, you know, I, I think we don't know exactly which items would be specifically regulatory and specifically conditions until we really sit down with it and start to tease it apart. Yeah. 
good. Any any questions from the council? Jennifer. So yeah, just to what Stephanie just how I'm just trying to think of how we do it as a committee. So like trying to go through and tease out those items. It just seems like you 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 got a lot done in a meeting this morning that could take a whole committee <laughs> a few much more time. So I'm just trying to think of the how we organize our work to be yeah most efficient. Well, I I wonder if it would make sense for um staff to take a stab at this first and and try to tease those things out. I, I think, you know, primarily the bylaw is the biggest focus. I think the other documents are accompanying documents. So maybe starting with the bylaw and at least getting the bylaw in some kind of shape and form that would be more easily reviewed by the committee. And then um, the other sections would would probably follow because I think my guess is this is not going to be a very quick process. So, um, you know, there'll be plenty of time for those other things to to be reviewed and come back to you. Um, and Chris may want to comment further on that. I think that we would have to reassure people that um, the things that we're taking out of the bylaw aren't getting lost. So it would kind of have to be parallel um, effort to uh, refine the bylaw, but then also show people, okay, well, we're taking this out of here, but we're going to put it over here. So it would be like showing them maybe not a refined rules and regulations, but uh, a place, a placeholder or a, a basket where we're going to place these things until we get a chance to work on them in more detail. So in other words, just not to have people fear that we're losing certain aspects of this. Thank you. Oh, Pat. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels to me like when, once we recommend a final version of the bylaw to the town council, all the rules and regulations, wherever they have been mo moved to, need to be approved as well. And then, and you're saying they're they're not going to get lost. But so it does seem this group ultimately needs to be working on those as well. Mm -hmm. And I think you're saying that. I just want to make yeah. sure. Yes, the rules and regs though would be adopted by the board or the board that has those rules and regs. Uh, so, so, so you're saying that the council wouldn't vote on the rules and regs; the planning board would. Normally, the planning which board means they them. could change them, which makes me very yes. uncomfortable. So, Chris, why don't you why don't you do sort of a, a quick step by step of what you're imagining? So make sure that Pat um, has her her pieces still in the in that mix. Yeah, I'm not sure what, I don't think the town council has a role in, um, you know, adopting rules and regulations for the planning board or the zoning board of appeals, but you would receive these documents as a package. So you would see that well, here's the bylaw, and here's the proposal to put these things into the Zoning Board of Appeals or Planning Board rules and regulations. And although you wouldn't approve them, you would then see them move along to either Planning Board or ZBA for their adoption. Um, so that's how I'm, I, I understand why you're uncomfortable, because that means that the Town Council doesn't have complete control over these things. Um, so that's a discussion that you need to have among yourselves. Definitely need to have that. Dave and then Jennifer, and then I want to say. Um, I was trying to draw some parallels between rental registration and the bylaw there and the regulations. And I think what Pat said a moment ago kind of resonated, which is, you know, we kind of need to be working on these in parallel. So I, but stepping back from that a minute, and, and again, recognizing that the conversation with Mandy just happened this morning, and I was kind of advocating for a little time for Chris and Stephanie to kind of get together themselves if, if the CRC is comfortable with them beginning to tease out these categories and and maybe putting them in, in these buckets of bylaw, rules and regs, conditions, those three buckets for now to, to address 
issues that have been raised, like we we don't, no one wants to lose any elements of the document as is, but at least trying to separate those a little bit with a focus first, as Stephanie said, on the bylaw, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, I also wanted to just kind of put something aside for a moment because I did want to come back to battery storage because I think you know, what we recognized this morning is that battery storage was not a major emphasis of the solar bylaw working group. I think I was not part of that group, but I understand it came in a little late, but I think from a staff standpoint, and I believe Mandy agreed this morning, um, but I think it's a good discussion point for us to maybe touch on tonight is, we think it makes perfect sense to move to, to have that battery storage be part of this bylaw, not develop two, um, because we all know, I mean, uh, solar projects are now coming to us as, you know, a dual project solar and battery storage. We all kind of doubt that we're going to get standalone solar projects any longer. We're either going to get, we're going to get battery storage and solar, or we're going to get standalone battery storage. So we need them both in this uh, and you know, happy to discuss that, but that was the feeling coming out of the meeting this morning is that we not wait and and do another bylaw later on battery storage. So I just put that out there for part of the discussion tonight whenever, whenever it's appropriate. Jennifer, you know. Yeah, and I think what came out at our last meeting, which I, I hadn't totally gotten <laughs> before, is that the rental bylaw is a general bylaw. And because this is a zoning bylaw, that, that's also why we as the council don't really adopt the rules and regulations. So the most we can do is, is make, we can make recommendations of what should be considered to, to the permit granting authority, authorities. At some point though, doesn't council have to accept them and make them official documents of the town? Chris is saying no. No, they're adopted by the board that they um, are related to. And most of what's in those rules and regulations is procedural, you know? Yeah. What does the chair do? What does the vice chair do? How do you hold a public hearing? How do you grant a, per you know, a, how do you vote on a permit? All these procedural things. But they do contain some, um, some other types of regulatory things. So in, for example, the, the bylaw changes that, that Mandy and Pat were, were recommending, um, that seemed to me that was pretty clear that the, the ones last year, last year, right. That the council was, um, was supposed to be the adopting party. Wasn't that right, Pat? Yes. The town council always adopts a zoning bylaw. Votes on it. Yes. May I speak? So basically what I hear you saying, Chris, is once the zoning bylaw is written, the council accepts it or or whatever. What Chris is separating out are the regulations and the procedures. That still makes me nervous. Um, <laughs> there's such there, there's been a lot of really good work on this bylaw uh, and by a lot of different people. And I and I feel uh, concerned that um, it can be shredded in areas that I would prefer it not to be shredded. That's my fear. It doesn't mean it's a reality, but I think it has the potential um, to be. Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to speak to um, Pat's concern. Um, I think the reason why we suggested that the um, the documents sort of be divided up into these sections is because the way it's written, it's really not reflective of bylaw language, really. It's it's just, there's too much. It's way too lengthy. It's not general enough. It's way too specific. And it just gets into the weeds in ways that even though that is great work and I agree, we didn't want to lose that, which is why we made the suggestion that we just separate these pieces out so that we don't lose them. However, I will say that even from the beginning, the idea was that the bylaw, now it would be sort of a packet of information 
gets distributed to the various com committees that have um, some stake, if you will, in this bylaw and the regulations and the special conditions so that they get to review and comment on it. So there may be some recommended changes uh, that would come on, you know, the bylaw, the regulations, or even the, the special conditions based on staff review of what they think is um, something that can be held up on, on challenge. So I think that's you know, there's there the idea is to so I just want to again reassure you it's to maintain the language, but after review by various committees and staff, there may be some suggestions for revision and change. Of course, of and course. that's you know I think that's but I don't think there's um, an idea to whole scale just delete sections. That's not the idea of this. It's just to delete everything. It's just to put it in its proper category, if you will. Yeah. So we could take a pass at taking the draft solar bylaw as it exists now and marking it up to indicate where various parts would go, whether they would remain in the bylaw or whether they would go to rules and regs or to conditions, and then show that to you next time we meet with you, if you think that would be helpful. That would be very helpful, yes. I think I wrote up my own list, and I would be very curious to see how we match up. Sorry. Um, I'm going to actually, while we're talking about this, I'm going to open up the floor to, we have two participants and I know they're both engaged in this conversation. So I am going to ask uh, if, if either of them would like to speak and it looks like Martha Hanner has raised her hand. So I guess I'm the host, aren't I? So Martha Hanner, uh, let's bring you in. Can you, can you unmute? Yes. Thank you for uh, letting me speak. I admit I got in a little bit late because I thought that this item was further along on the agenda. I know. I know. And uh, but I must say, as a mem former member of the Solar Bylaw Working Group, I'm very concerned by uh, what I've heard, and that you know a couple people went off. And, you know, had a discussion, made some some decisions, you know, where is the transparency? And, um, you know, when we did the bylaw, yes, maybe some there's some details like how high do you have to put the hedge for the border or, you know, things like that. But there were a lot of points that we based on experience in other places, plus some what's in the state documents and in other uh, bylaws, zoning bylaws from other towns that I would be very concerned to have be relegated just to regulations. And one of my concerns uh, in very general way is these arrays are large areas of land, right? And what often happens in any kind of construction project is the first step is the contractor comes in, levels the land, you know, digs up everything, scrapes off the topsoil and gets all ready so it's an easy job. And I've seen two cases right here in the neighborhood where I live, right down on Wildflower Drive just this past month, a developer came in and com completely um, clear cut as a a section of land right next to where it drops down to a stream bed. And it turns out it was illegal. He had no permit. And so I would like to make sure that things that have to do with construction in particular are very strongly in the bylaw. So it's very clear, you know, things that we put in, you might think are detailed regulations about not disturbing the uh, topsoil and different things like that need to be very clearly in the bylaw. And so that's just an example of some of the details we went into in discussing different topics. And uh, for Thank instance, you. in the yeah. farmland uh, section, we went into some detail and before changing anything, I would strongly recommend that folks uh, on the council uh, would review of the session that we had with the agricultural experts 
it was uh, sometime in July, it was one of our meetings, and that the, the requirements that in the bylaw in the agricultural section came straight from there. And Stephanie and Chris, that was the meeting you folks missed. <laughs> so I don't know if you uh, went and listened to that. Okay, well, thank yes, you. you. Uh, so thank you. Miss. Thank you, Martha. Appreciate it. <laughs> Steve Roof, do you want to raise your hand and speak? Can you hear us? Can you unmute? There you go. Yes, thank you. But uh, no, thank you. I don't have anything to say. I'm just uh, <laughs> enjoying listening to you guys get into the weeds and figure out how you're going to process this uh, complex issue. So okay. thanks and keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. Thanks for attending. Okay. Um, sounds like we're at a point. So I, I've heard some... Can we move them back into the audience? Uh, yep. I'm not sure I know how. Uh, talk. There we go. How's that? Um, so we've heard uh, good good consideration and and appreciate the reminders from. Um, the working group itself that there is a lot of information that we don't want to that we don't want to lose. Um, if staff is interested and willing, we have a meeting on uh, April thirtieth, and this certainly will be a topic. And I would certainly appreciate if you if you have a draft of literally you know which section moves to which component. I think that may be a very good starting point for conversation. At that point, I would also, though, like to have a longer conversation about uh, getting that input from the different committees and boards for you know those with some jurisdiction and oversight for those topics, uh, in particular the drinking water group and uh, CONCOM and things like that. So um, that'll be how somehow to structure it. Dave, you had your hand up and then Chris and then Stephanie. Yeah, thanks, Pam. Two thoughts. One is that I guess my thinking would be it's, I, I don't know where you were going with getting feedback from those other groups, but wouldn't we wait until we have some drafts on that? I mean, it seems premature to to get them involved at this point when we're we're just drafting, right? I mean, this could I, take. I'm trying. I'm trying to say, um, let's yeah. be ready to talk about that, not yeah, necessarily okay. have have them all. Perfect. Um, already yeah. had their their input. That's great. Um, the other thing I just wondered, um, we didn't touch on battery storage, and I kind of put that out in the, the the meeting, and I just wondered, you know, if people had thoughts about. And you know, again, I was not as involved clearly as as Christine and and Stephanie and some members here in the working group. But I was curious what your thoughts are on including battery storage in this process. Does that make sense? You know, is that consistent? Is that you know? I think we're also trying to be efficient here and you know and get a product you know, that we can all be supportive of and proud of as quickly as possible and not have to come back. You know, there's so much to talk about with regard to, you know, solar. We talked this morning a little bit about, you know, the impacts of, of as Martha indicated, you know, clearing land, uh, erosion, but also battery storage has its own unique set of of conditions and concerns, but I would hate to have, kind of leave them lagging behind and have to catch up with battery storage. So that's I'm just Thank curious you. if others let me, let me hear from Chris and and Stephanie and then and then get some responses from the counselors. So I wanted to say a couple of things. One, I wanted to reassure Martha that there was um, nothing going on behind the scenes. Um, the CRC um, agreed last time we met that um, a small group of us staff people would meet with 
Mandy Jo and hear from her what her ideas and concerns were about the draft bylaw. So we did that this morning and then I gave a pretty lengthy report to the CRC before Martha joined us. And I can send that, I can send my notes to Martha, you know, to reassure her that about what we reported. So I feel like, you know, we we said everything that we said this morning in this meeting and the, and the CRC has heard all of that. So I just don't want Martha to think that we're doing things aside and then not making them public. Um, the second thing is I wanted to say we already have a battery storage bylaw that was drafted last fall. Um, and it was based on a couple of other battery storage bylaws that we uh, had become acquainted with. Um, excuse me, you can come in. Um, and so I can send that out to all of you. And I think some of it is redundant with the solar bylaw as it's drafted. And that's why it seems to make sense that we could combine the two. So I'll send that out to you and you can review it between now and the 30th. And um, meanwhile, I'll take a crack at marking up the bylaw that we have now to say, well, this could go to rules and regs and this could stay in the solar bylaw. The other thing is that you all have control. You know, we don't have control. We're making suggestions to you about what we think would be appropriate and how to manage this process. You know, you could take the bylaw exactly as it is and send it on to town council, but that's not what you were charged with doing. So you were charged with putting it into a format that makes sense and that's organized and that, you know, will be appropriate. So I don't want you to feel like you don't have any control and that we're telling you what to do because that's not our intent. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie. Yeah, I also wanted to reassure Martha that our proposal to separate out the regulations and special conditions were an effort to maintain the language and the work of the committee so that it doesn't potentially get lost because the bylaw as written, um, as much as it is wonderful work, it's also not reflective um, of the rest of our zoning bylaws and the way they're written. So we didn't want the language to get lost, and which is why we suggested that an accompanying regulation packet and special conditions packet um, be assembled because it maintains that and that essentially this is a packet of materials that go together. So they're not lost. Um, and I was also going to recommend in terms of process that um, I'd be happy to work with Chris on separating out the, the elements and working with her on that. Um, I can work with her uh, together. And then I think once we go through that and you review what pieces and parts we're proposing to, to put into these other documents that we actually do that. And I might, what I propose maybe is that working with Chris, Chris, can I outline them in the document, but that maybe I can then pull them out and actually have a draft of those documents as separate documents so that you have one document that shows what would be pulled from regulations and special conditions, but then you also have the regulations and the special conditions as standalone documents in the bylaw to review kind of at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Can I just ask if you do that, that you keep at least the, the, to the current numbering system in a way so that we can track what was originally 17.08 and where does 17.08 show up? Where does sure. it end up? That would be helpful. And then you can rename it, but but some reference to that original numbering would be very helpful. Right. As this will be just a draft, then yeah. it would be easy to just sort of have, you know, a sort of parenthetical locator of where yeah. it came from. Good. Thank you. Uh, sure. Councilor Ette. So I, um, I think I grabbed what... Um, Dave threw in the air regarding the combining the bylaws and including battery, but this is a topic that is new to me. And so on one hand, um, Christine has answered the question that I had in my head, which is how much more work would that be in the combination? But um, if Dave could expand on how much more work it would be practically, that would be 
helpful. And um, another question that I have is, what is this third bucket that is the special conditions? I think I have a sense of what bylaws would be and rules and regs, but what the special conditions are, is those are a bit unclear for me. Thank you. Chris, do you want to answer that right now? This what are what what constitutes boilerplate conditions? Can you give an example? Yeah. Um, so there's every site plan review and special permit that we do includes things like, well, here's what you have to do during construction, and here's what you have to do with lighting, and here's how your drainage should be handled, and just um, things that are sort of typical of every project. And I could send the committee um, the latest document that I have, which I guess is probably the library or something like that, and show you what kinds of conditions we put on the library project for site plan review and probably for special permit. And that would give you um, an example of, of the kinds of conditions that we put on. And you can see that some of them are particular to that library project, but some of them are typical things that go into all um, all application decisions. Would that help? Um, I think it does. From what you've described, it then seems that special conditions are more aligned with regulations than with the bylaws. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Pam, could I address Councillor Ette's? Yeah. And I have to put my hand down accidentally. I think the answer is, I don't have an answer. I think I would defer to Christine and Stephanie, um, who who were much closer to the solar bylaw working group process. Um, I just posed it out there this morning and and posed it here to you now. Um, it's just in my mind. It's it's hard to separate these two, and and I guess I would ask them to either comment tonight or think about that between now and the meeting on the 30th. What are some of the pros and cons of, of having parallel bylaws and, and what does that entail, not only for staff, but for you all and the council? Um, um, can, I, can I respond, Jennifer, to that? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I had been thinking a little bit about, did we want a separate bylaw? And I understand that there was one uh, drafted uh, that we could take a look at at least. My question would be, um, maybe the more important question is, would there be a whole lot of redundancy between the battery storage portion of it and the general bylaw that's dealing with solar arrays and storage, or even if it's just solar arrays? how much redundancy would we be building in if we had two separate documents? I'm, I'm actually very happy to have two separate documents if it, um, if it is not so redundant that we have, again, a whole separate package of rules and regulations for, for battery and a whole separate rules and regulations for solar arrays. Um, that's where I'm coming from. How do we keep it simplified? Jennifer. Yeah, this is kind of a little getting back to um, maybe in response. What we were talking about is how it came about that the meeting happened this morning with Chris and just one representative from CRC. And that's because at the last meeting, we talked about forming a subcommittee, but we can't do that. That if even two of us were to form, then we are subject to open meeting law and having it be a public meeting. So just I just wanted to provide that context for... You know, that's how we designated one member of CRC to have the conversation with you because we couldn't have a subcommittee. Um, and then I just wanted, you know, yeah, I to just wanted to, uh, I guess, echo what uh, Councillor Ette said that when we were working on the rental bylaw, that was kind of, we were finishing up the work from last time, but a solar bylaw and battery storage is completely new terrain, at least for me. Um, so as you know, so yeah, Chris, if I'd love to see the special conditions that you you know for the library, because um, this is I'm excited of working on the bylaw, but it's totally new territory, and 
it's not something <laughs> that really impacts my particular district. So it's not something I've been involved with the way uh, Pat has. Thank you, Dave. Oh, may I ask, um, to whom should I send I've I've made a list of things that I'm going to send to you all. Should I send them to Pam and then Pam will distribute them? Yeah, that makes okay. it easy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm just going to jump in quickly, Pam. Yeah. Again, I, I I don't feel like I have a strong horse in this race of two separate bylaws, but something you know, Pam, you said about redundancy, and so in my mind, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about our time together, staff and, and council, all the way to adoption, and then working through, you know, the, the, the other boards and committees. But I'm also thinking about um, uh, clarity. We, we need whatever we do with bylaws and rules and regulations, uh, we need clarity, we need, um, we need consistency. And so I'm thinking of both the boards and committees who will need to enforce what these bylaws and rules and regulations um, will ask applicants to do. I'm also thinking about applicants. You know, how do they navigate, you know, our 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 rules and regulations broadly defined in town? And we often hear concerns about how many rules and regulations we have in the town of Amherst. So again, I don't really have a strong horse or voice in this, but I just want us to think carefully, do these two things belong together and is that the way to go versus having two separate uh, documents? Um, because, and and again, I, I'm hoping at a future meeting and I'm sure this will come out as we as a group talk about the bylaw, taking all the good work of the, of the working group is, you know, what do we want to achieve? What does the town want to achieve through the bylaw and the rules and regulations? What are our goals in other words, you know, I think, you know, in my own words, I might say, I think we want the town to be open to um, generating green power for our community and the region, while at the same time safeguarding residents, uh, their, their livelihoods, their health and safety, while also safeguarding the, um, the environment, um, streams and wetlands and, and farmland, et cetera. So, you know, I, I think we want a lot out of this bylaw. We we don't want it to seem um, uh, unfriendly to solar, but we want to present a a uh, playing field for solar developers to come in and say, okay, here's what Amherst would like. They you know, and and that'll determine size and and clearing and and all the things that I know the the working group uh, focused on. So anyway, that's for future meetings. Yeah, and hopefully the working group put a very nice summary and purpose statement in that document, so we have it already. Um, I was going to ask Chris if you could, for our benefit, um, tell tell us where in our in our documentation in our town in our town records where do regulations and general conditions end up because because there are some people who just don't deal with ZBA or planning board. So where do those regulations show up? So the regulations, we have to give regulations to the town clerk. So there's, the town clerk has a copy of the regulations. Um, we also have them available on the planning board website and the zoning board of appeals website. On the planning board website, they're pretty clearly there. There's a list of things in the left-hand column and one of them is, Planning Board Rules and Regulations. In the Zoning Board of Appeals, it's a little bit more obscure. You have to go click on Resources, and then it comes up under Resources as Zoning Board Rules and Regulations, but they're definitely publicly available. Um, the second thing you asked about was conditions, and conditions are um, for every project that goes through site plan review or special permit, either with the Planning Board or with the Zoning Board of Appeals, the conditions are part of the decision, and all the decisions are filed at the registry. They're recorded at the Registry of Deeds. They're easily accessible if you know a particular one that you want. You you know search the um, the the address, and then you can get to all the documents related to that address. And if there's a site plan review or a special permit, you'll be able to see it from there. You could also email me if there's a particular one that you wanted to see. 
Um, they are also with the town clerk, but she has paper copies, and so they're not as easily searchable um, with the town clerk. And unfortunately, we used to have a mechanism with our GIS system where we had a link to all of the decisions, but they took that down because of security uh, reasons. So, um, so we don't have that anymore. But um, you can go to the registry and look for a particular property, or you can, uh, you know, contact me and I can send you whatever you are interested in. So I may I may put together a list of those kinds of resources and and double check it with Chris and then send that out to everybody so that we have, uh, for instance, just a way to go look to see what other general conditions have been put out there. So we yeah. have a better sense of what to expect. Um, Stephanie, and then I think, I think we're kind of wrapping up this conversation so you all can go home. Uh, thank you, Pam. Um, I just wanted to say with, that with special conditions, I think the idea here would be that there would be a, a boilerplate so um, very often for the Conservation Commission, I know has a set of boilerplate conditions. The state has a set of boilerplate conditions that are available that um, various municipalities can pick and choose whether some of the conditions are relevant to a project. So I think it could be an accompanying document to the regulations as either maybe an appendix as, you know, identified as boilerplate conditions. So they don't have to be specific to a project. In that case, they're just general um, for any solar project that the committee or the PGA could actually choose those conditions from. So I think the idea was to have them available as they're currently written now in this draft, there are many that we can sort of pull out and make part of that boilerplate so that they're available and they can accompany the regulations as an appendix. So the the conditions would be would be an appendix to rules and regs. Correct. Great. Any other questions from from CRC and before we let these folks go, with the understanding that hopefully on the thirtieth of April, um, we will get a nice breakdown of potential restructuring of the material that's in the current draft bylaw in in a different organizational form. Great. And thank you for doing that. Um, I'm going to actually offer myself up if you need to meet with CRC or ask questions of CRC of any sort, let me know. I would be very happy to sit and meet with you. In fact, it'd be great to do it on a regular basis. Maybe that just keeps things rolling, but that's up to you. Think about it. Good, thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. And the sun is setting. <laughs> Pat, how are you feeling? I am just, I, I was gonna, I raised my hand. I'm gonna leave the meeting. Um, there's still a quorum and I apologize, but I'm having a hard time with my knee. Oh, sorry. I will see you all soon. So just so you're aware, um, we were going to talk about planning board. We're going to do the same process. We need to update that bulletin board notice. Yeah. So can go out and, and probably go extend maybe into halfway into July, just in case. That makes sense. And then, and then, um, we'll do the same process, reaching out to those people who have sent in a calf within the last two years, the current people uh, reaching out to the um, chair for input to see if he wants to update the input that he gave last time. Um, but that's generally, it. it's pretty much housekeeping. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I don't feel too bad leaving right now, especially in Four good hands. Eight good hands. <laughs> Feel better. Thank you. Yeah. Drugs. Bye. Yeah. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye, Pat. Feel better. <laughs> so you just got the speech. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I might uh leave you as well if you're just gonna talk about <laughs> interviews. I don't think you it's not something I would generally our feelings won't be hurt. Yeah. That's fine. So, so I, I guess I am the host. Is there anything I need to do at the end besides just stop the webinar? 
stop recording, stop the webinar, and okay. you're done. As much as I would like to spend this evening, last evening, there's meetings tomorrow and Thursday night if anyone would like to uh, join us. There's Conservation Commission tomorrow night and Housing Trust on Thursday. So we should all look for- never stops. <laughs> Dave, right. thank you. Have Appreciate a good night. Very, much. Good night. very good right. conversation tonight. Thank you. Jennifer. Yeah, I feel bad. I shouldn't have said that oh, yeah, solar doesn't apply to my district. Of course, we're on the same planet. Of course, it does. They're just, we get up with not clear cutting forests <laughs> on Amity there Street. There are none. When we lose a tree, we get upset. <laughs> I know. Right. right. That tree on the corner of the two. <laughs> right. Uh, so, well, let's move on to our other action item, which is just planning board vacancies. I kind of spelled out everything, but I did, but I think I did put in the SharePoint and I don't know if they got posted on, you know, the public, the public forum. Did you all see those documents? I don't think they're in the public forum, but. Okay. So then they're just simply sitting in our, um, in our SharePoint site. Councilor Ette, do you have, you have access to that, of course. Yes, point. I do. And I have, uh, yes, I took a look at it. Let me take a look and see. So in that, um, let's just pull it up because I would like us to re review the, um, um, the planning board notice. So I'm going to actually pull it up and share it if I can. So I'm not seeing it in mine. Uh, I put it in, well, it, it says planning board, bulletin board notice 2024. So let's see if I can, let's see if I can share. Share screen. Sorry, I'm not more fluent about this. Um, I think it's this one. Can you see it? Yes, that's great. But I uh, and anyway. I can't. I can't yeah. see it at all except it's on my big screen. Yeah. Is it enlarged as much as it needs? To? I, I can read it. Okay. I'll read it if if you. Um, okay. Can you see it or read it? My mute button disappeared, so I was looking for it. Um, yes, so it is in my folder, and I can see it here. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. So can I just read it quickly? And I think um, the only thing I changed was who the current chair was, because it used to say Mandy Johanneke. But it's basically we'll be filling two vacant, impending vacancies, um, seeking residents interested in serving, currently accepting applications, interested in serving on the planning board. Um, applicants should have experience with aspects of planning, development, design, architecture, construction, zoning, and or real estate. Uh, I would put in law as well. The town council is especially seeking individuals of diverse backgrounds, including those who have no prior municipal government experience. For more information, read the information handout that we would, that we typically provide them if you're interested in serving, fill out your CAF. And those who, have, this is the, the weird sentence. So those who have submitted a CAF expressing interest in serving within the last two years do not need to submit another. And I pointed this out, but in fact, we've been asked to have people submit a CAF after the bulletin board notice is posted. So Mandy told me last time that that if they've submitted a CAF in the last two years, they still have to submit another one after the bulletin board announcement goes hmm. up. So then we should take that out so they don't think. Yeah, it's to me it's it's contradictory. And I would think there's some people that might not recall if it's been two years since. <laughs> 
So I think maybe we could say, if you have submitted a CAF expressing interest in serving within the past two years, you will be contacted regarding that submission to confirm your continued interest. Does that make more sense? And given your formulation, that leaves open the possibility that upon this contact, you may be required to submit it again. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That seems clearer to me. So those who have submitted may be contacted regarding the prior submission. Okay. Yes. So we will, we will, we will strike, we will strike that. Yeah, that would be helpful. So we, will be contacted. And then if necessary, we will ask you to submit a new CAF or, or you may need to, I won't, I don't want to, I don't want to muddy it up. Yeah. Uh, and it just says, if you have questions, reach out to Cam Rooney and I would say, or Jennifer Taub um, at da da da, or the town community participation officers. And then it just says, the council appointment of planning board is in accordance with us, thus, thus, and the references are cited. I have checked the documents that are linked here. They're still active. Um, and I think with your permission, I would forward this am slightly amended document to Athena and ask her to post it on the bulletin board. Councilor Ette. Um. Simply a matter of style, those who have submitted a CAF expressing interest in serving within the past two years will be contacted regarding your, but since those, so. Um, Could we say if you have submitted a CAF within yes. the last two years, you will be, okay. If you. If you have submitted, if you have submitted a CAF within the last two years, comma. Oops. Comma. You. You will be contacted regarding that could I just say regarding that prior submission? Confirm your continued interest. So Jennifer did that with all the ZBA people. She said, you know, are you still interested in serving? We're gonna need a statement of interest, et cetera. Jennifer, you got your hand up. Yeah, so just, um, so I actually think you sent out the initial letter on the ZBA and then I took it from there. So just to go, just to confirm, this has to be posted yeah. for a certain amount of time before I can write to the people for whom we've already received calves or I could do that right away. Um, I'm trying to, Mandy, Mandy would know this. Yeah, I'll um, look, I don't want to take up our time here, but. It's yeah. very, then everything, it's, it's a requirement how long each stage phase of the process has to be. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if- as, as, as long as this gets posted in the bulletin board, she could do it, you know, probably by Friday, right? Or by Thursday even. Um, once it's in the bulletin board, A, it's visible for people who are, looking around looking for opportunities um but b it just means that we have opened the door officially to seeking applicants and right, so my next question is could the seats will become a open on july 1st could we potentially have them filled by then yeah I mean, we should yeah. be able to right yeah, right right 
So if we have we have two positions, I'm going to ask both of those people if they are interested in renewing. And um, so either way, we'll, they still have to be considered along with everybody else. So it's not a, it's not just a shoe back into the, into the slot. So we would like to have the interviews in June. Yeah. Yeah. We could do it. With we, time to go back we, to the council. Yeah. End of May, early June, June gets really, really busy. So if we targeted for trying to get it all done in, you know, mid May, that's, um, that's actually about the time we did it last time it was May. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it starts over, but there are fewer people. <laughs> right. There's only two openings. So yeah. But it would be nice to have six applicants at least. It'd be great. It'd be great. Great. Okay. So I will save that. I will make those changes and then send it to Athena. Um, let's see if there's any other documents. The planning board guidance, selection guidance. Um, this works. Okay, can you read that? So it's criteria for a healthy and effective body. And then the second part B is input from the from the body's chair. So maybe when I write to the body's chair to ask if he's interested in reapplying, <laughs> I will say at the same time, to save time, would you, uh, do you want to update any of this for the minimum qualifications? Um, how's that sound? It sounds We're good. We want one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I will ask for the, for the chair input. Jack. Check. Okay. And if there's a little bit of change, we'll just adopt it as um, revised on a whatever date. I'm guessing we could um, accept this on the 30th. That would be another good topic to just get done. Um, and then the last item is the interview questions. Oops, that's not it. Is that it? Sorry, guys. Sorry, it's picking up the one that I had before. Can, what can you see? Just the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to start again. Share screen. There it is. Oh. It was Thank lost. You. Yeah. It was lost in the ether. So these were the 12 questions. I was hoping actually, there's no reason that we can't vote. We have a quorum. We can at least accept interview questions, right? And these are the ones that we have, um, that we used last year. Can I read them to you? Is that easier than trying to read this fine, funny text? Um, one, what do you feel you bring to the planning board that can make, make it successful? Please include any experience you have appearing before or serving on the planning board or ZBA or watching one of their meetings. Tell us about an experience you've had collaborating with a group. 
particularly where opinions conflicted or the decision was controversial. Three, describe how the planning board can help achieve the goals of the master plan. Four, please describe the considerations and objectives you'll use for considering proposed revisions to the zoning bylaws. That's pertinent. Five, what's your opinion of waivers, exceptions, and special permits in the zoning bylaw? When should they be used and when should they not be used? Six, what is your approach to incorporating public input into your decision making? Seven, what else would you like us to know about you that makes you a strong candidate for the planning board? Eight, confirm you over time. They're very similar to ZBA. Any thoughts, Councilor Ette? It appears the fewer candidates uh, and so there might be more time. And so I think I'm fine with these questions. Um, perhaps I don't really, I, I'm uncomfortable expressing my feelings. And so question number one, what do you feel you bring um, I, I think I'll be fine with what do you bring? <laughs> as 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 you are you feeling it is an appropriate, it is an appropriate question or an inappropriate question? Oh no, I think it is appropriate. I just um if I'm sitting down for an interview, I want to be out of my feelings as much as possible. And so um, I just, I, I'll tell you about what I bring. Yeah. Should we take out the word, what do you feel you bring? And yeah, what, say, do, you what bring? do you bring? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly okay. It's no, you're right. It's, it's, there's no reason for that to be there. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's a, it's a softer way to say, tell us about yourself. Okay. Tell so us we, how great you are, yeah. What? No, maybe it's just it's just me. That's, that's no, no. You're right. Me. It it's it, um. How about if we said what what might you bring to the planning board that can make make it successful? That works for me. Thank okay. You. But I have my window open. It's very noisy. Oh really? Can you hear? Okay. No. Okay. So what might you bring to the planning board that can make, make it successful? Please include any experience. I like the collaborating one. That's always a good conversation. That's really nice. Um, people, people sometimes are not aware of sort of the master plan and, and actually the responsibility the planning board has to maintain and update it. Um, yeah, and that's sort of a, it would be sort of a suggestion to someone that they look at the master plan. Yeah, exactly. And they get these questions ahead of time. Yeah, which is very helpful. So I think it's, it's great if we could um, vote on it tonight, because then we, if, as we're corresponding with people, we can get the, to them sooner. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we don't have to wait till April or end of April to do this. Um, any other thoughts on the wording? Council Ete, you don't need to put yourself on mute each time unless you've got noise in your background because it's <laughs> just the three of us. <laughs> no, I, I I don't have noise at this point, but I, I think it's good practice so that I don't speak out of turn. Thank you. <laughs> practice. Well, you're very self-controlled, so I don't expect a flare-up from you. <laughs> any any other thoughts on um, on any of these? 
If not, I'm willing to entertain a motion. So I will move my... Oh, oh I have to... Change. I actually thought I was muted. Um, hold on, I, hold I, on, I have just a second. I have to change um, to Pam Rooney down here. It was, it was Mandy Johanneke. Okay, that. Okay, so there you see it. I have to change that one as well. Okay, and now I'm ready for a motion. So um, I move that we accept the uh, planning board interview questions um, that were, would they be adopted today or still as adopted May 25th? No, we could adopt it. Or we okay. could amend it, amended. Today. I guess as amended, because we did make some changes. Yep. And today is 4 9, nine April 9th, 2024. Great. Any more discussion? If not, uh, Councillor Ette. Um, since it was a motion, was this supposed to be a second? There is, yes, thank you. I Keep, second. Second, excellent, thank you. Keep yeah. us legal here. Um, so we'll go, we'll go to the vote. Councilor Ette, now that you've muted. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer Taub. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. So it's unanimous. We have adopted the interview questions. It will be for whatever date. So I'm, again, I'm very sorry, it's, but it's going to be, it's going to be whatever the new date. Oh, uh. Today's April 9th. Yeah. So this is this is uh, amended. April 9, 24. Great. Okay. And I do want to confirm, we don't meet again till the 30th? That's right. We oh. were going to otherwise meet on the 23rd. You're away. Um, it's also the second night of Passover, so we exactly. probably shouldn't. Right. It, and that's why we ended up moving it. Okay, good. I didn't yeah. really think. Thank so you. It's the 30th, for sure. It's like two weeks off. I can't believe <laughs> it. I'm really excited. What um, kind of makes up for meeting three? We've met three weeks in a row now. Yeah. Okay, so that was unanimous. Um, I can't do chair input tonight because I don't have new input from the chair. So that's that's a that's a an April thirty discussion. And then the bulletin board, um, I was told I'm authorized to send it to Athena um, and just get it in. And I don't know why we didn't have to vote on that one like we did everything else. But maybe it's just administrative. I don't know. Okay. But we know we don't have to. Right. Right. Thank you. Good. Council Ette. I did notice you said there may be follow-up questions from CRC. So this would be, in a way, a departure from what we had um, with zoning what would be the time limits and would that be confined to since the questions or the the, the group will be interviewed together will mm -hmm. follow up questions be for a specific candidate or will those be questions that would be for all candidates to answer I think, and Jennifer, correct me if, if I'm wrong, when we we had to go ask um, town council to allow us to ask a follow-up question. And I, what I can't remember is if that made that possible anytime. So we don't have to keep going back to ask if we're even allowed to do a follow-up question. Um, but the follow-up questions that we did ask were if any if any counselor had 
some clarification that they needed to make on an answer that someone had given. It was not, it was not a carpet, um, same question to everybody. Right. I don't think we need to go back again. I don't. I don't. I don't think so either. I guess I can double check with. Athena would know. Athena would know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll ask her. Um, that's a good. But that's that's excellent because we did ha at one time need. There was there was concern that somebody had brought something up and they wanted to really clarify it. Yes, and we um, definitely did need permission from the council. Yeah. Which is so odd. Okay. I think, I think folks, that's, oh, hold on. <laughs> Let's be thorough here. Let's do it with due diligence. Okay. We have no meeting minutes that I'm aware of. Did you see any meeting minutes? No. I didn't either. We haven't had any for months. Um, I have no announcements. Anybody else have announcements? Um, Wait. what? Councilor Ette has. Oh, sorry. And I was looking at my paper. Yeah. Um. I this isn't an announcement, but for next, the next GOL meeting, there may be a need for clarification on some parts of the nuisance bylaw. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to crave you know indulgence. Um, for whoever would be able to make it to that meeting, just yeah. um, if need be, so we could have some, ask some questions and get a few answers. Okay, Jennifer. Yes, thank you, Councillor Ette, for, uh, you know, jogging my memory just from last night. I don't know, but the chair of GOL did say, you know, after the meeting, just that, after the council meeting, she said that because the um, comments on the nuisance bylaw were more extensive from KP law than they were anticipating, that they may want it to come back to CRC even. Mm. But maybe if, you know, you were, you know, somebody's at the meeting from, if that question can be not, answered I'm at GOL, gonna... maybe they wouldn't, it wouldn't need to come back to CRC. I'm not able to be there on the 18th. Wonder if Mandy Joe is able to be there on the 18th. Council Ete. It may not be necessary, but it, it would be preferable. What um was also proposed or a different proposal would be that rather than have the nuisance be referred back to CRC to come back to GOL, that um, there might be some um, changes made. And if there are points of clarification, those could be put in the form of a question or a memo and um, they'll be emailed to the chair with the chair giving some answers. I think that might actually work better. So let me understand. So GOL might might make comments or um, or questions that they simply want, they want an answer or they would like to have addressed and that um, CRC could respond to those questions or could respond as we did with the rental registration, we actually made changes in the text and said, this is in response to GOL. Okay. Yeah, so there could be changes to the text, but in addition, there might be some that would adjust the entire tenor of the work. And in that case, having some questions that could be sent to the CRC chair um, for clarification, but that wouldn't require sending the entire yeah. thing here. Yeah. Okay. And I can always reach out to Rob Mora because I think that would be, and, and, and Chief Ting as well. So it wouldn't need to come back to the full committee. We wouldn't have to maybe wait till yeah. April 30th, hopefully. That would be the preferable way, the most efficient way. So we'll see. 
Okay. So can I ask so, another? Sure. Could well, could questions be asked of the chair before GOL's April 18th meeting? Probably not likely. <laughs> Giving Probably not like the people are, people are, you know. No, no, I'm just thinking if the chair of, of GOL, I don't know, mm -hmm. could get asked the chair of CRC. I'm just trying to think how it. I don't think there's a problem with it, but <laughs> I don't know. Councilor Ete. Given that there will be an acting chair who is unfamiliar <laughs> with the role, I, I doubt that that would be a possibility this one time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good good to know. That's right. I forgot about that too. So um, just in conversation about, actually, nuisance is not on our agenda tonight, so we really shouldn't be deliberating about it. But um, that said, I think I will ask around to make sure that somebody can be there on the 18th to answer questions. As, as you being chair, I think it would be... Um, I think it would be helpful if you reached out to Athena and said, could we have uh, Rob Mora and possibly acting Chief Ting attend that GOL meeting to discuss this? I think I when I read, I shouldn't be deliberating. Anyway, I didn't think they were KP law was KP law was referring to things that we actually had in the previous bylaw, so that in fact hadn't been changed. So I, you know, maybe they just never read the earlier one. I should stop because we shouldn't be talking about it. But I will put I will put nuisance bylaw on the agenda for for um, April thirtieth, just in case we end up talking about it. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you for reminding me. That's good. Okay. So next agenda, I'm thinking we will have nuisance. We will have a solar report. And we should we should do the remainder um, planning board documents that um, I should have feedback from the from the chair and everything else should be in pretty good shape at that point. So right. I think those are those are the three topics. And we can all, you know, get the word out, however we yeah. do to the public to that there are openings on the planning board. Yeah. Any other topics that we should consider? I think we have enough. I'm, I'm not going to add housing policy. That's just like a whole brand new topic. Okay. There were no, uh, there were no items anticipated. 48 hours in advance, and I think it's time to adjourn. Jennifer. We have to move. Oh. I saw that written that it said even for committees. Really? really? Oh, that drives me nuts. Okay. Uh, would you like to make a motion? Yes, so I uh, move that we adjourn. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Let's take a vote. Jennifer. Yes, yes. Council Ette. Yes. And Pam Rooney says yes. So I am going to, I believe, stop the reading and and end the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you bye, -bye. Thanks for sticking with this. Bye-bye. No, thank you. Bye-bye.